have changed the stresses there and made a big amount of the San Andreas more likely. Yeah, so you're absolutely right that this is a very complicated area of the San Andreas. Uh, it's very well studied, but because of, there's numerous strands of the fault, and it's not clear which of those strands will take the large motions in a, in a large earthquake. Certainly today's earthquake did change the state of stress. It, it occurred because the stress is built up and, and were released. It's likely that in and of itself this earthquake did not change the state of stress <laughs> in a significant enough fashion to precipitate a large earthquake. But we don't know for sure. So if a large earthquake were to occur later today, I don't think there's any seismologists or geologists that would be surprised that, that that were to happen. And again, that would be the type of quake that could unzip along the San Andreas. It could, and it really depends on the state of stress, not only in that area, but also as you get further away along the San Andreas. And unfortunately, this is all happening, you know, five, ten miles beneath the surface of the Earth. So we don't, it, it's hard to, to delineate exactly what the current state of stress is, how this earthquake actually changed that and reoriented it. But this was a thrust event, right? There was some uplift? Uh, yes. Yeah, this was an oblique thrust fault. So uh, as we say, the, the San Andreas at this point is not completely aligned with our plate motion. So it, is, it isn't purely horizontal motion on our fault here. Uh, so it's driving, we've got this kink and it's driving up the San Bernardino Mountains as they get pushed up uh, in the north over the, yeah, over the southern section. And we do, um, just to further sort of speak about the state of stress here, we do see earthquakes of this magnitude every couple of years in this area. It, it <coughs> is surprisingly active for the San Andreas here. And if I could follow up, forgive my ignorance, I thought most of the San Andreas was strike slip. It is, yes, yeah. So because this isn't perfectly aligned, you can kind of see on our maps here that uh, normally the, the San Andreas is, uh, let me think, <laughs> northwest southeast <laughs> here it's turning slightly closer to east west and that shift in the orientation is what contributes to it having that push to it that thrust motion to it that vertical movement on the fault which we don't experience on other sections of the San Andreas so did the mountain move up slightly this morning <laughs> it, it, yes yes very very slightly and actually that's something we will be looking at to see if that was measurable if it if it if it is measurable it's going to be very very small but it is likely, a likely hypothesis is, that the San Andreas Fault and this type of motion over the millennia has created a, a mountain range. That's why we have mountains in Southern California, because are related to the faulting activity. Is there any possibility it's related to Hawaii? Hawaii. Uh, the, the chances, so the, the question that came out was, is, is this is today's earthquake related to the activity of the eruption at Kilauea? Uh, the direct correlation is that it's not related. Uh, you could make an argument that it's related in the grand scheme of things in terms of the global plate tectonics and so forth, but there's no direct correlation between the activity that's going on in Hawaii right now and today's earthquake. Let's go see this one. Any other questions? I'll keep asking them. Nobody else will. <laughs> so, with, with the, uh, uh, the early warning system, how far out does the messaging go? How far away do you get where the, the, it's so light that you don't bother to notify? Well, yeah, it, it will actually be broadcast out much further than the, the shaking. And, and, and the intent there is, you know, let's err on the side of being conservative. If it, and, and in fact, if, if there's a subscriber that happens to have their ShakeAlert app and they're in Alaska, they would get the warning, right? Um, and it would say, you know, uh, 500 seconds till no shaking or something like that. So there's no inherent limit on where that broadcast goes out. <coughs> Excuse me. The intent, though, is to make sure that the areas that are going to experience the strongest shaking will definitely get the, the app. And as we move forward with the public uh, release, you know, where, where notifications are pushed out, that, that would definitely be the, the, the model, is to make sure that the areas where the strongest shaking is going to occur, that those areas get the, get the message. So it's likely with this app that, that's already out there being beta tested that there are people who got light shaking in 10 seconds or whatever, and then in 10 seconds later they say, what are they talking about? I didn't feel anything. Well, hopefully they, 
yeah, hopefully they said, well, yeah, let me go check and see, and oh yeah, an earthquake did occur, and, and this is the time that it came in. And in fact, that would be the case here in Pasadena. So the, the, it was 30 seconds warning, and the shake alert system would have said, uh, now I slept through this, so <laughs> sorry, but uh, it, 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 I'm sure it said, uh, you know, it counted down and it said, you know, 10 seconds to no shaking. Five seconds to no shaking, you know, and so forth. Uh, so it, the, the warning still goes out, um, and, and in some ways maybe that's still useful. You kind of, it's situational awareness, even, even if you don't experience the shaking. So is it fair to say after this earthquake the odds of another major quake have risen? Well, uh, yeah, how to answer that. I would say with each day that passes that we don't have a major earthquake, we're one day closer to having a major earthquake. <laughs> it's difficult to quantify the impact of today's earthquake in that broader scheme. So we have statistical models that look at this, and that's where this 1 to 2 percent number comes. You know, within the next week, there's a 1 to 2 percent chance of having a larger earthquake than today's magnitude 4.5. Uh, but again, in the broader scheme of things, each day we go without a major earthquake means we're one day closer. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask one of them to talk to me about the map. So um, should we grab the map? Yeah, grab the mic.